guys, it's Sarah and welcome to Books with Tea. I want to talk about the books that I read in June. I can't believe that June is over. We are officially halfway through the entire year and it just doesn't feel like that at all. It's so weird. But anyway, let's get into the books I read. I actually had a really good reading month. I read eight books. I'm about to finish and I'm so I will mention that later on. I've started quite a couple of books and I've never finished them. I'm only like 50 pages in in like five different books for some reason. Um, so of course none of those books are in this wrap up. I just wanted to mention that I did some more reading than what I'm about to show you. First on is one where I actually read the majority of it in May. Um, but I finished it in June, so obviously it's in this wrap-up. And that book is Fallen Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. Um, the first book in the series, of course. This is the German edition, which I got from the publisher. Thank you very much. Um, but I have actually listened to the English version on Audible, just because I usually like to have the original experience rather than a translation, so yeah, I listened to the audiobook. Um, I really liked the audiobook, it was very nicely narrated, I really enjoyed it, um, but let's get into the story. Fallen Kingdoms is described as being a YA take on Game of Thrones and I can totally agree with that. It follows lots of different characters, but they are all in the young adult range. And and this book has a great world, a great fantasy world, with lots of different countries and regions. Um, they all have a different culture, different gods and all that stuff. Um, and it's really interesting to see the different point of views um, from everyone, from the different countries um, on these issues. Um, I think that this was a great start into the series. I really like the characters, I like the way the story was told, all the pacing. Sometimes it could get a bit boring, but usually it was just really action-packed and great. So overall, I did not think that this was a perfect book by any means. I had a couple of issues, but overall I really enjoyed it and I'm really looking forward to continue the series. So I actually rated this 4 out of 5 stars. Next on, I read a book which I don't have the physical copy with me anymore and that was The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and um, this was a really interesting book because it has the whole take on the legend of Achilles, the Greek hero and it focuses on a relationship between Achilles and another guy called Patroclus, I believe um, that you pronounce it like that and um, it's told from Patroclus' point of view um, it tells the story of Achilles, of course, it tells the story of their relationship, of their love and it's so beautiful, I really liked it, I thought that it was written in a really great and sort of lyrical, beautiful way um, but for some reason I couldn't get into it 100%. It was pretty slow paced, which was okay because it's just the way the story was told and it was really beautiful to read it, but still I couldn't get really immersed into the story. I didn't really love it as much as I would have expected to love it. And I don't really have any criticism other than the slow pacing, which I said is essential for the book and it's good for the book, but it's just it was something that I couldn't really get into that much. I couldn't really read a lot of the book at once. It took me quite a while to finish it. So I don't know, it just took a bit of the enjoyment away for a reason I can't really name. So overall I also rated that 4 stars, although I think that it's a really great book. And I know that many people love it a lot more than I did. I don't really know what happened. But it's really nice, it's a nice LGBTQ plus story. Um, it's a really great take on Greek mythology where really I don't know a lot about it but I always love to learn more. Um, and overall it's a really good story which I would definitely recommend. After that I read two graphic novels. The first one I picked up from the library and this is by Penelope Bagieux and Boulet. I don't really know who these people are, they are French authors, French graphic novel artists um, and in German this book is called Vianders Blatt. It's not actually out in English because as I said the original is in French and it was translated into German but it was not translated into English. Um, I'm not gonna bother to say the French name because I couldn't pronounce it anyway. But this was such a cute graphic novel. It's about a girl who wakes up and um, has completely lost her memory. She wakes up on a 
pirate bench and she does not know where she is, who she is, what's going on. She goes back into her flat eventually because I think she found her key in her purse and um, she goes back there. She has no idea who she is, she has to go to work and all that and she just does not get her memory back and she doesn't know what to do, she's trying everything to figure it out and it was so beautiful, it had a really nice ending where you could really take something away from I guess had a bit of a moral um, which I still really liked and the drawing style was really really cute I really appreciated it um, and overall I think I rated it 4 stars it was really nice and yeah I would like to read more of these artists it was not the best graphic novel ever by any means um, and I think that it could have been a bit longer they could have been a bit more suspense and a bit more happening but it was just so cute and I had a lot of fun reading it so four stars is a good rating for it I believe after that I participated in the Readorama Readathon where I didn't really get a lot of reading done at all but one of the books that I did read was Lama James by Noel Stevenson and a couple of other um, graphic artists and um, I got this one for my birthday, I was really excited for it and to be honest I was a little bit let down by it. This is about a group of Girl Scouts who just have fun at this camp and um, they encounter all sorts of magical creatures and a lot of weird stuff keeps happening to them. They meet monsters and I don't know, a lot of weird things just happen and uh, I was disappointed because I expected something more from it. I don't know, it was kind of fun um, because it was just ridiculous and weird and it Reminds me of Adventure Time where I don't watch Adventure Time because it's too weird for me so probably that's just what happens. It wasn't my kind of thing. Um, sadly because I really really wanted to enjoy it. I'm also a bit sad that um, Noel Stevenson did not do the art style inside the graphic novel. Um, she did the cover design but not the pictures inside. Well, I really like the pictures, but I just enjoy Noelle's drawing style so much. She did Nimona, which is my favorite graphic novel ever. So yeah, I have to say that it's a fun and cute story, that the characters are adorable and there's a lot of friendship and all that fun stuff in here, but I just expected more. I'm let down, I expected more and overall I think I rated it 3 out of 5 stars. I wished that there was more to it. I don't know if I want to continue because this one was so expensive. Maybe if I can get cheap copies somewhere or maybe I will even read it online for a couple of euros. I don't know yet but ah, I just wish that I had liked it more but I didn't and that's sad. <laughs> The next book I read also during Readorama is Some Kind of Courage by Dan Gemeinhardt. Now I don't know if you have heard about Dan Gemeinhardt before, but he wrote one of my favorite books of last year and that was The Honest Truth. Um, now this book is his second novel and of course I had to pick it up. Um, he writes adorable middle grade books which I just love so much. Um, so this one is set in the Wild West, as you might see from the cover. It has all these Western elements, which I just love. It follows a little boy um, who has lost his parents and, and who is all on his own. He only has his horse left and it was taken away from him. So the whole story revolves around him trying to get his horse back, to find her, to be reconnected with her because he loves her so much and he's all he has left, which is just so adorable. And then he meets um, another boy at the way, a Chinese boy who doesn't speak any English, but they become great friends and it's so heartwarming. And I just love Dango Meinhardt's story so much. The writing is beyond beautiful. The characters are adorable. It just it makes you feel all the feels. Um, it doesn't matter that it's middle grade, it's so great. And like you actually cry while reading these books, although it was made for children, but you still have to cry because there are so many feels in this. I loved it. I totally recommend it. I think I gave it five stars because it's just amazing and yeah I can't wait for more books of him I will read anything he publishes for sure because he is just so amazing yeah 5 out of 5 stars for some kind of courage 
So since the beginning of June, I've been participating in the Harry Potter readathon. So I've read one Harry Potter book a week, and I've just been loving to reread those. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I read the first book in the illustrated edition, and I really loved it. I actually made a video about my reread, which you should totally check out. Um, I've been just asking myself a couple of weird questions about Harry Potter, and I've been just talking about my rereading experience. Um, so yeah, I love that this illustrated edition um, had all these beautiful pictures in it. It was really a new thing added um, to the whole experience and it was so much fun. Um, I'm so looking forward to the rest of the series being illustrated as well. And yeah, I of course gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. There's nothing else for Harry Potter, really. Next on, I read The Chamber of Secrets which I also really love. For a lot of people it's their least favorite Harry Potter book. Um, I think I understand it, but I still really love it. Um, I love that Dobby was introduced and it was just really great. Um, I love Jenny in this book and I don't know, I just loved um, rereading it a lot and of course I also rated it 5 out of 5 stars. And then I've been rereading The Prisoner of Azkaban, which I also loved. Um, this is just like the turning point in the series really. You just see how much Harry grows up um, within this book and just he's starting to act so different than in the first two books and I love it. Um, I love Lupin of course and Sirius and yeah I had so much fun rereading this book. And right now I'm currently reading The Goblet of Fire which I haven't reread in many years actually. So it's really great, it's kind of like reading it for the first time because I've forgotten so many things and because like for the first couple of books pretty much anything could also be in the movies but from this book on they're just way too big to include everything in the movies so there are just so many little things that aren't in the movies either that I've just forgotten about and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm filming this video a couple of days early so I don't know, by the end of June I might have finished it but maybe not, I don't know. Um, anyway, I just thought that I would mention it, and yes, I'm really loving rereading this book as well. So I think that those were all the books that I read in June. I had a really great reading month. Um, please let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts on them are in the comments, and tell me what you have read and what you have loved in June. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I will hopefully see you again in another video very soon. Goodbye!